If there's one topic that's always mentioned when people talk about good software engineering, it's the topic of modularity. But what does modularity actually mean? What is a module? That's what we're going to talk about today. I'll explain what a module is, and most importantly, what to put in a module. To make these decisions, we will use the single responsibility principle, the first of the solid principles. A module is a cohesive set of functions and data structures that belong together. In many programming languages, these functions and data structures would end up in one file. So why am I talking about modules and not just about files? That's because different programming languages have different ways of organizing their code. In C++, for example, a module would usually be one header file defining the interface of that module and one or more source file implementing that header file. Other languages use packages to organize their code and there a module might simply be a package. That's why when we're talking about software engineering principles, we stick to the generic terminology of module. Okay, so now that we know what a module is, the question is, what goes in a module? As I said, we want to put things that belong together in one module. But what does this mean? When does something belong together? Well, if you're developing software, you probably have some gut feeling about this. Function A and function B might clearly belong together in a certain module, while function C does something completely different, and hence it makes sense to put it in a different module. But there's also going to be functions where it's kind of unclear where they belong. That is why it's often helpful to formalize this a bit. And that's where the single responsibility principle comes in. This is perhaps one of the most misunderstood solid principles. It is often misinterpreted as a module should have only one responsibility. It should do only one thing. This, however, is incorrect. In software engineering, we have something that does only one thing. This is called the function. If you ever see a function called do A and B, you know that this is a good candidate for refactoring. It should probably be split up in two functions, one called do A and one called do B. So if the single responsibility principle does not say that a module should have only one responsibility, what does it mean? To properly understand this principle, it's important to understand the reason it was created. In general, we make modules to localize changes. What I mean by that is that if one of the requirements for your system, for your piece of software changes, then ideally you want this change to be very local. Make a small change here. It does not impact any of the other features in your system. And hence it can be done quickly and without risk. That's exactly what modularity is all about. Localizing functionality so that changes can be made locally. And you don't have to go all over the system to change different things only because one small requirement changed. An earlier version of the single responsibility principle was therefore a module should have only one reason to change. But this is a bit vague. So it was reformulated to be a module should be responsible to only one actor. Note the responsible to part here. A module can be responsible for different things as long as its responsibility is to only one actor. What is an actor? An actor is one or multiple people that have a certain requirement that changes for the same reason. For example, say we are making a payroll system and Bob and Charlie from accounting come to you with the question of, can you generate a report which shows the amounts that need to be paid to all the different employees? Bob and Charlie are two different people, but they represent the same actor. They have the same requirement and most importantly, their requirement changes for the same reason. If the accounting policies change and the way of communicating these reports change, then obviously both Bob and Charlie will need a change in the software. However, if Jane from HR comes to you with the question of whether your software can also generate emails that should be sent to employees, informing them of their paychecks, then this is certainly a different actor. Because obviously the, the formatting used in these emails is very different from the reports used by accounting. Even though both are based on the same data, the salary data of employees, there are different requirements to them and they will change for different reasons. So what would happen if we would just put everything in one module? As I said, both these types of reports, emails, they operate on the exact same data. So you might be tempted to just put it all in one module. Let's draw up a diagram. We have our two actors, accounting and HR, and a single module that serves both these actors. This module offers two public functions, one for each actor, and there's a number of private functions that support these public functions. 
For example, it might have functions to retrieve the time that employees clock in at the start of the workday and clock out at the end, and a function that uses this input to then compute the worked hours. So you build your system according to this diagram, and you're really happy that you managed to avoid code duplication by putting everything in one place. You test your system, you ship it to the customer, and they start using it. But then, a couple of years later, the same customer comes back to you with the following message. There's been some restructuring in the company, there's been some new regulations about payment, and most importantly, the accounting department now wants to distinguish between normal working hours and overtime hours, and there are different tax regulations involved here. So you or some other developer, maybe a different team, starts to look back at the code and tries to figure out how to make this change. They find this module that's responsible for creating reports, and luckily they see that there's already this function called compute worked hours. Great. They copy paste this function and modify both versions. There will be one version now to compute the normal hours and another version to compute the overtime hours. They then hook up this new function to the part of the code that generates the accounting report. They thoroughly test this new requirement and find out that everything works perfectly. Great. Update shipped, customer happy, until a couple of weeks later, they get all kinds of complaints from the different employees as the emails they're getting with their paycheck information suddenly contain fewer hours than they actually worked. This is because the behavior of the original compute worked hours function was updated to only report the regular hours. The developer that made this change was not aware that the function that creates HR emails also depends on compute worked hours. Furthermore, this developer did not even know about the HR actor and its requirements. Hence, the tests that cover that part of functionality were not executed. It seems like just a stupid mistake. But of course, your customer has been using this new version for a full month now, and their HR department have to redo all the reports they created in that month. That's a lot of time and a lot of money. These kind of bugs get introduced all the time, especially in bigger systems, and they're really hard to find. They are caused by putting code that serves two different actors in close proximity. This would have been prevented by following the single responsibility principle. If we would have split up this piece of functionality in two different modules, then any change made for the accounting team could not accidentally break something for the HR team. Same thing the other way around. That's why it's always important to check who your actors are and make sure that every module is responsible to only one actor. Back to the diagram. How could you have done this differently? We could of course have created two modules. One to serve accounting and one to serve HR. The accounting reporter and HR reporter. But clearly these modules work on the same data. They both need the employee information. If we just make two modules, you'll probably end up duplicating a lot of code. That, that's not nice. So now let's create a third module. We will call this third module employee data, and it will be used to store information on employees. Specifically, it will store when employees clock in and clock out at the start and end of their workday. This information can then be used by the different reporters to compute worked hours as needed for their reports. Now there are two different modules that depend on this new module. You could wonder whether this also violates the single responsibility principle. I would argue it doesn't, because both of these modules have the same requirement towards the new module. Both modules just want to retrieve employee data. More importantly, their requirements only change when the actual structure of the employee data changes. In other words, their requirements towards the employee data module change for the same reason. As such, even though there's two different modules, they can be considered the same actor. Similarly, if a third requirement comes in, maybe the database administrators want to retrieve this information to store it in their offsite backups. This is a third module, but again, their use case, the way they're going to be interacting is going to be exactly the same. More importantly, it's going to change for the same reason. They just want to retrieve that data and store it somewhere, just like the accounting team wants to retrieve the data, create a report, and the HR team wants to retrieve the data and create an email. In the end, we have now grouped the requirements we got from our external stakeholders into three different sets, and all of these sets represent requirements to change for a specific reason. In our design, these different sets of requirements are represented as different actors. Each actor is served by its own module, allowing us to break down the functionality of our system according to the single responsibility principle. So, to summarize, a module is a cohesive set of functions and data structures that belong together. To determine what things belong together, we need to consider what actors they are responsible for. If there are two different actors, 
then it makes sense to split these things up in different modules. If all the functions and data structures are there to fulfill a requirement for only one actor, and as such, this requirement has only one reason to change, then it makes sense to group them together in one module. So by following the single responsibility principle, we can decide how to divide our code into modules. And we can verify whether our current division in modules is actually a good one. So now that we've decided it needs to go in a module, the next step is of course designing the module itself. How can we design a class to make sure that we can easily extend it in the future? This is where the open close principle comes in. And it will be the topic for the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.